Hi! Today we're going to do some very basic stuff in Blender. Add some objects. We're going to do it in Python, though. I'm using the 2.82 version of Blender. So let's get started. Let's save our file right away. Ctrl S. Let's find the destination where we want to save it. Let's say here, here. And you can name it whatever you want. For example, adding objects in python.blend. Now, the first thing you want to do is go to the scripting workspace and create a new script. Let's activate the sidebar and change the font size to something bigger like 14 or maybe 16 so that you can see it better and then you can close the sidebar. Then we have to import the BPY module. Import BPY. Now select all in the 3D view over here, A, and delete, X to delete. We're going to add some cubes in a loop. The function that you use to add a cube is BPY OPS Mesh Primitive Cube Add. You can use it with many interesting arguments, but I'm going to keep it simple. And now let's get to the real code. So let's get rid of this here. And now we want to create 100 cubes along the x axis from x equal to negative 250 up to x equal 250. One cube every five units. So we need a loop. For i in range negative 50, 51. Now we want one cube every five units. That's why we're going to multiply the loop variable i by five in the first line inside the loop. So x equals i times 5. If you multiply this by this, you will get the range from negative 250 to 250, because 51 is not included. This is how the range function works. Now the cubes will be scaled along the y-axis in a parabolic pattern, so by a factor equal to the square of i. Hence we have depth equals i to the power of 2. We also need a parabolic pattern along the z-axis. So height equals i to the power of 2. This is the actual line of code that adds a cube. We saw it before. BPY OPS mesh primitive cube add. And here's some arguments. Size equals 0 0.1. Location equals. Now here we have our x and then 0, 0. And here we're scaling the cube along the x, y, and z axes. BPY OPS transform resize now value equals twenty depth height. So the constant value of 20 for x, depth and height for y and z respectively. Now if you run this script over here, watch what we get here. Fine, this is what you get. 
let's make it a bit larger so that you can see it better. That's what we wanted to get. Now select and delete all in the 3D view editor here. Select all, delete. Then in the text editor, you can either add a new script or edit this one. So let's just get rid of this. And now this time we're going to add icospheres in a loop that will be located along a cosine wave. The function you need to add an icosphere is the following. BPY OPS mesh primitive icosphere add. And now here's the actual code. So as before, we have to import BPY. And now we're going to need the cos function and the pi constant from the math module. So we also have to import math. These are the two modules we're going to need. Now we're going to add icospheres along the x-axis. The z-values are calculated using the cosine function and the value of x. So first of all, Let's write the code for the loop. For i in range negative 200, 201, the letter not being included, do the following. First, calculate x. The values of x should be equal to multiples of pi over 20 radians. So x equals math pi divided by 20 times the loop variable i. The z values will be multiplied by 10 to make the pattern more visible. So z equals math cos, so the cosine function, of x times 10. And now the actual line of code that adds the icospheres. So this is the function we saw before. BPY OPS mesh primitive icosphere add. And the arguments are the radius. Radius equals 0 0.5. And location. Location equals, and here the tuple x. 0 for y and z. Fine. And now, if you run this script, you get something like this. So, as you can see, the icospheres are added along the x axis in a cosine pattern. So, as you just saw, there are different arguments that you can use with different functions. If you want to add another primitive shape, like a UV sphere, cone or torus, for example, you can look up the function you need in the documentation. But there is a fast way. Suppose you want to add a torus in code. If you are in the scripting workspace, there is the info editor where everything you do is logged, regardless of whether you do it manually or in code. Here it is. Let's make it a bit bigger so that you can see it better. So everything you do is logged here. And now before we add the torus, let's select and delete all in the 3D view editor. A to select all, X to delete. Fine. The deletion of 401 objects is locked in the info editor over here. But what's even more important for us right now, there is the Python code that was executed. Here you can see the code that was run to select all and then delete the selected elements. Select all, delete. 
Now edit torus manually in the 3D view editor. So, Shift A, Mesh, Torus. When you do, you will immediately notice in the info editor that the code run to create the torus is there. Now you can click on this code to highlight it and copy it using the Ctrl plus C shortcut. So, Ctrl C. Now you can paste it in the text editor. Let's get rid of this. And let's paste the code we copied here. As you can see, the line of code is pretty long. This is because there are quite a few arguments passed to the function. If you want to see the whole line, just click the word wrap button over here. And now you can see everything. Now you know what function you need and you can tweak it, leaving out the arguments you don't need, for example, and use it in your code. So, as you can see, adding objects in Python is pretty straightforward. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.